everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today's video is a really big one and I'm excited because I have some exclusive news on the Wheel of Time TV show that is most certainly 100% no doubt true and there's no way that any of it is made up and it's definitely not satire, for sure. Before dropping these bombs on you, I want to throw up a spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of green, meaning there will be no spoilers at all other than basic character names. Feel free to watch. So this information I have comes from a top secret source within the show. Basically what I'm going to let you know about are some casting leaks, plot details, and information on the overall direction of the show. Overall, I'm really excited by the news as I think this information fans really wanted to hear, and it's going to alleviate a lot of your fears. I know many of you have expressed fear in the comments below about the direction of the show, so I hope this information makes you feel better about what Rafe Judkins and the crew are up to in making the Wheel of Time TV show. So let's start with some casting information. The first of these bombshells is a casting choice for Rand. It seems Rafe really wanted to stick with the height and the red hair on this one. My sources are reporting that comedian Carrot Top has been cast in the role of Rand. Personally, I think this is a great choice because he has red hair and he's used to being in front of people in Vegas. This has certainly prepared him for the role, and he's also right about the right age. The second bit of casting news, we have an Elaine Tricand casting as well, but this is a little bit different of a take on the character. Sources are reporting that Gilbert Gottfried has been cast as a male version of Elaine Tricand. Rafe has decided to make her character male, and Rand will have a homosexual relationship with Elaine during the series. Gilbert and Carrot Top have been shipped as a celebrity couple behind the scenes before, so this might actually work really well. The next bit of casting news is something I actually predicted in my casting video, so I'm really proud of getting this right. The prestigious role of Bella the Mare has been cast just as I thought. Two actors have been picked to play Bella, using some prosthetics and one playing the front end of the horse and one playing the back end. Two actors have been chosen as it will be easier for the other characters to ride Bella if there are two people rather than one. If you didn't see my Bella casting video, the two actors I picked were Daniel Day-Lewis to play Bella's rear and Meryl Streep to play the front end. Apparently Rafe liked my picks as they were both hired. Check out this picture here to see how all of that will work. The final piece of casting news we have is another big one that I'm very excited about. Fellow YouTuber Daniel Green has, in fact, been cast in his dream role. He will be playing young Ulver in the Wheel of Time TV show. This is something he's been preparing for and campaigning for for quite a while now, so it's fairly exciting to see his dreams come true. He's a big fan of young characters in, in book series, so getting a chance to play a young character in a TV adaptation is something that he's been looking for for years. I called Daniel to congratulate him on his role, and he shared a couple thoughts with me that I'm going to relay to you all. For one, he will be completely shutting down his YouTube channel to focus on the role. Although Olver won't be in the show for a couple seasons, Daniel really wants to take a method acting approach and fully immerse himself in what it's like to play a 10-year-old boy. The good news is they look exactly the same, and there will be no need to change his appearance at all. Good luck, Daniel. And then we have some set design news. Artist concepts for some of the major cities and locations have been released. First, for Tarvalin. As there have been many artist conceptions of Tarvalin before, they are using these pictures as the basis for creating the city. The pictures really show the center of power for women during the series. Next, we have the newest map of the Black Tower. They decided to use some of the similar themes as with Tarvalin to show the men's center of power as channelers. I can tell you that based off of these artist conceptions, the set design is going to be right on target. You can really tell they worked long and hard to make this perfect for us fans. Now switching gears to some other leaks from the show, here are some more thematic concepts that Rafe and the team are using as they create the Wheel of Time adaptation. I think that most of these will certainly make the Wheel of Time community feel better about the adaptation. The first I think is a super smart decision. To avoid any type of controversy surrounding the show, Rafe has decided that there will be no heterosexual relationships within the show. By making all of the characters homosexual, he believes that this will make Robert Jordan's writing come alive. In addition, the Shadow has been replaced as the main enemy in the series. Instead, our characters will be fighting the patriarchy. Morden will be played by an old white guy, 
and most of the show will be trying to take away his rights and give them to the Shan Chan, as they are undocumented immigrants to the Westlands. The show will be a musical format as well, similar to the old Fox show Glee. I think this is another smart move as it will allow the showrunners to express their artistic creativity in a way that Robert Jordan surely intended. David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, the main writers and showrunners for Game of Thrones, have been hired to write most of the episodes of Wheel of Time, and they will orchestrate the ending of the series as well, as they have extensive experience ending major fantasy series. A couple smaller leaks include some notable changes. For one, the title of Warder will be replaced with Social Justice Warder. A scene that was leaked to demonstrate this change is when the crew is departing the two rivers, Lan, being a Social Justice Warder, tells the group that the horses must in fact ride them rather than the other way around because they shouldn't be treated like animals and they should be equal to the humans. So, on the way to Tarn Ferry, Bella actually rides a Gwaine. Mandarb rides Lan. So, again, these are some small changes, but I think it's one that's going to make fans happy. Also, for when they're packing their food to leave, they pack a lot of avocados for food and some toast, making sure that they get organic versions of each of those. These changes are designed to appeal to millennials. My last piece of exciting news is that I have been cast in the role of Narg the Trollic. I was chosen because of budgetary reasons. Apparently, they're not going to need any makeup or prosthetics or even CGI to turn me into a Trollic. So it was an easy choice for them. I hope you guys are as happy for me as I am to take on the role. So that's it, guys. Those are my completely 100% true uh, leaks. They couldn't in any way not be true, and this is definitely not satire at all. Um, so I hope you guys are thrilled with the changes. What do you all think? Are there any other big changes like the ones I've shown that you think should be in the show? Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I actually release more serious content than this. Check out the Patreon if you want to support what I'm doing here. Hey, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed as much as I did making it. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?